Hello. Happy Monday. Happy pep rally. Happy day after Mother's Day. Anyone else like have a stack of laundry to fold? Because I ain't doing that on Mother's Day, right? <laughs> My husband showed me the funny meme that said on Saturday, make sure you fold your laundry. It's not that funny when you hear it from your husband. All the mamas out there, make sure you're folding the laundry and doing the laundry. Hey, Crystal, so that you don't have to do it on Mother's Day. Is that not the truth, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to wait too long because we all know the whole whole waiting and stuff. And I know most people are going to watch this on the, on the replay. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Rachel. I hope you guys all had a wonderful Mother's Day to all the mothers and spoiled your own mother's. A lot of you guys know me personally. I lost my mother um, last year, and so Mother's Day has taken on. It's a little, it's a little harder for me, but I have my boys to celebrate. It's just a little bit tough not having my own mother around. So cherish those mamas. Um, okay, so let's get started. I have some notes, but I am gonna warn you guys. I'm kind of a squirrel. I'm gonna go off of. I like to just talk from like what's coming to my mind, what's on my heart, what I feel like you guys need to know. Um, I also feel like a lot of us that are entrepreneurs, that's kind of how our mind works, right? It's going in a lot of different directions. So I feel like most people can stay with me, but I did take some notes so that I make sure that, hey, Megan, that I do touch on all the points that I want to talk about. So this is going to kind of I guess have a wide spectrum of maximizing the initial sale and what it actually means. Initially, when I signed up to do this, it literally meant how to take your first sale from, let's say you sell the quad and one brush, and that's your average sale to a palette 12 and two or three brushes. So that is, I do want to touch on that, like the actual physical dollar amount of selling more and why that is actually better for the customer. But I also want to touch on like the actual sales process, personalizing it, problem solving, how to turn those customers into a customer for life. So I wanna just start out with a quote that I don't remember if it was on a Saint training years ago. I've been an art, my name's Lisa Ringus. I didn't even tell you guys that. I've been an artist for, it will be close to six years. Um, absolutely love it. Best thing, life-changing. Um, yeah, I will forever be grateful for Saint um, for everything that it's brought me. Um, so I don't know if it was on a training for actual Team Jacob or just a self-development because when I started and really realized the potential of this being a, you know, able to quit my job to turn this into a real business. I really dove into a lot of personal development and a lot of different leaders and books and um, sales and, and that kind of stuff. And so the quote that I have written in every one of my daily planners from the last five years is I'm not trying to gain a sale today, but a customer for life. And I have really, really tried to live by that, okay? And I can remember one of the, I guess, true statements that I have lived this, or true testimony that I've lived this quote, is if you guys have been around for, it would be probably four plus years, um, there was a time where we were out of a lot of brushes and a lot of highlight colors. I mean, like amber, candlelit, sandy, the main shades. And so you would get a color match and I was, this could have been five years ago. I was pretty new to the business within a year or two and I wasn't getting a ton of color matches. So you get one in, you're so excited and you're like, oh, she is definitely candlelit. And people were kind of coming out with, well, you can mix sandy and white peach and that'll give you candlelit. And I absolutely thought, what? hey, Leslie, what is best for the customer? Well, the best for the customer is that they get candle it. Not that they're having to mix colors. I mean, we know that mixing colors on your face is pretty normal as far as, you know, people that have... Anyway, we know about all that, right? So most, most likely they could have used those colors anyway. 
But for me, I knew their best experience as the first customer would be to wait until Candlelit came back in stock. And that's hard when you're so excited and you wanna get that sale. But I also knew that waiting those whatever, three, four, sometimes it was a week, was worth it to my longevity of the sale. So I will tell you, some people are in this business and they just wanna make some quick cash and you know, and they're okay with that. But if you're in the business of turning this into a business and sustaining, the key to it is to keeping those customers. And that is making that first sale the best experience possible, okay? So that is also into what we're talking about. So that is something that I've always tried to live by, okay? And then one other thing that I, I'm pretty sure it was Rachel Jacobs that in one of her trainings, she talked about how the Palette 12 was the best thing to sell. And at that time, I was probably selling the, um, one of my, I can think back when I was a year or two into it, what my initial sale was usually six colors and two brushes. So it was $142 and it was two highlights, a contour, a lip and cheek, an illuminator, the blush and bronzer bundle, and then one other brush. And I remember Rachel having a talk about how, you know, you should offer the 12. Like the actual reason why this one compact makeup is amazing is all your makeup is in one compact. And that can be your eyeshadow, your setting powder, your lip conditioner, your eyeliner, your eyeshadows, your brow color. That really is how you hook somebody. Not hook them, I hate that word, not hook them. But that is how you get people to say, this makeup is life-changing because this is all my makeup. I can save time, space, money, energy, all the things, right? So at the time I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of just going with the, here, you can get started for only $110. Like, and you know, I kind of probably showed price more um, and everyone sold the quad and that's how I started. And you know, I didn't want people to think it was too expensive. And I really thought about that and I really let it sink in. And I started thinking more that way. Another thing I'm pretty sure, Rachel, talked about was not determining your customer's budget, okay? So what that means is, let's say to us or to somebody else, you're thinking, oh, they're not gonna wanna spend 200, let alone $300 on makeup. Like there's no way, but we don't know that. We have no idea what to them expensive is. That's a relative term. And this is such a quality product I mean, one, the initial investment is the brushes. We know that. We know that coming back, the $16 a tin, I mean, any more now? I mean, when we started, it was $12 a tin, but the inflation, I think, of drugstore makeup, we have kept our prices so incredible. So as far as having high quality and affordable products, we are, I mean, it's, to me, mind-blowing that we get to sell this product at the price we do. But so don't determine what your customer's budget, because we don't know. And they, good point, Megan, too. And we don't know what they want to spend. And they can always come back and say, I'm getting passionate. <laughs> I can see I'm getting loud. They can always come back and say, you know, I'll have people say, oh, I was looking to spend under 200 or, you know, under. And I'm always like, you know what? I totally understand and I will tell you too, I always voice message. I'm not going to get into the whole, because this is a whole nother training on, you know, personalizing um, how you do your color matches, how you talk to your customer, how you make it convenient. I'm going to speak to those terms, but that would be a whole nother thing on actual systems and email versus, you know, text or DM. But I will tell you, voice texting as far as communication, I feel has helped me tremendously to um, just connect with your customer, which that's what it's all about. And so I always say, oh my gosh, I completely respect a budget. And I always, you know, say here, here's the deal. Like if you're able to invest, I always offer two brushes, always. Um, and 
if they say, you know, and I said, that's an investment, but I've had my brushes, you know, for five years, but you know what, if let's start you out with one brush, you know, and let's maybe have you start not with the eyeshadows, um, and get you started with the creams, but don't assume it, offer it because that's what we are doing. Another thing you guys. So, um, okay. So let's go back. Cause I have an assignment. If you guys want to do it is to figure out what your average first customer sale. So your first sale from a customer, what your average sale is. And this is how you can figure out things like knowledge is key to success. Okay. So what I did was my average sale was 142. I told you guys what I was selling, right? And I'm like, okay, I want them to get more products to realize the beauty of this one compact makeup. So I started offering the eyeshadows, a brow color, two lip and cheeks to mix and match. Um, and the more I did that, my sale, I remember my average sales, then I figured it out. So what I would do is go back and maybe to make it easy, look at the last 10 first customers you had, or five if you don't have a lot of customers, and add them up and divide it by however many customers you have, just so you have a starting point of how you've started. And I remember when I went to like 180 something, 182 was my average sale, and now it's over 200. And I guarantee you it's because I'm offering them more. Okay, I'm offering it to them. And then they can see it. They can always say no. Um, and then another thing I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, I used to say share versus sell. I remember Harmony had a, um, back at one of my first, probably the first um, conference I went to, which was four years ago, five years ago. Harmony did a wonderful training, my upline on sharing versus selling. And it really helps people that, you know, think I'm not, I don't want to sell, you know, I don't want people to feel icky. Um, I have decided that it is solve versus um, sell. Okay. Because sharing, I share Amazon links. I share the romper I bought. Um, that's sharing. But I want to, with my saint makeup, I want to solve a problem. I want to make someone's life easier. I want their makeup to be, make them feel confident, make them feel more beautiful than they've ever felt. I want to solve a problem for them. So I really think hopefully that's something maybe you guys can take out of this because in this day and age, people want to buy solutions. They're not really looking for products. They're looking for the solutions. Thanks, Rachel. I actually, I don't know if I came up with that myself. I mean, obviously I didn't, but I really, this morning I was just thinking about it, it came to me as I want to solve versus sell. Um, and then, uh, okay, and the way we can solve, again, I could go down a whole, you know, whole nother training on the whole color match. Hey, Laura. Um, but two or three things that to get them to trust you, know, like, and trust, and help you solve that problem is you need to personalize the experience and you need to make it easy and convenient, okay? So people, again, the whole maximizing the sale, this is huge by making it convenient. Build a cart for them, create their account. Again, I'm not gonna go deep into all of that. Make it easy. People are so busy nowadays. And I remember when I first started five and a half years ago, and I had a friend that was selling Zaya activewear and I wanted to support her and I was going to buy some leggings and I went on the website and it was so confusing and I was trying to put it in someone's party because she told me to and it was so confusing that I just quit doing it for a while, totally forgot about it. And, you know, and I think I went back and did it, but hey, Christy, but I remember saying to myself that I will never have my customers feel like that, I will always make it easy and convenient for them, even if it's a little more time on my back end. And so this is another thing with maximizing the sale. By offering the products, by giving them maybe two, three, four eyeshadows, again, I personalize my color match, so I ask them 
if they want eyeshadows, I also, you know, but I always, if they want eyeshadows, I will offer them at least three or four. They can always say they don't want more. And I will build that cart or I'll create their account and I will send that to them. And it is so much easier. And honestly, so many people will be like, that's amazing. I'm going to buy that again. But if you got nervous and were like, you know, I used to not ask you want eyeshadows and then I'd be like, oh, I don't, I don't want them to look at this and see $250. And again, $250, we can't determine what expensive is to them. And think of, we know the value. We know how long that's going to last, how amazing it's going to be to have all of their product in one compact. So think about that kind of stuff. Again, personalize. Now, if someone says, you know, I don't wear eyeshadow or I want a super simple, fast, streamlined look, you know, that doesn't mean to like go hog wild and sell them an 18, right? But there is still so much that we can offer them that they don't even, you know, they don't know. They're looking to us as the expert. So I'm going to check my notes. I wanted to keep this at about 15 minutes. Um, main thing, like I said, solve versus sell. Um, instead of share versus sell. I don't know. Hopefully that'll maybe flip a switch with you guys. I think it's really, really helped me lately. And by solving their problems, um, oh, thank you. By solving their problems, it is by getting all their makeup in one compact. It's life changing. You know, it is, saves them time and space. Um, a quad is nice, but that 12 or 18 and having everything in there, that is where they really think, I'm never going back to having the Naked Eyeshadow Palette, this highlighting kit with four blushes that I only wear two. Um, and then the assignment, if you guys wanted to figure out your average um, initial sale and how you can increase that again by offering more. That's just something, I'm a numbers person um, that helped me determine, you know, so five years ago I was at 142, then I was 182. And now um, I haven't done it for a while, but I know my average sell is over 200 and I know it's from getting personal with their color match and also offering them more and not determining what their budget is. And then lastly, just bringing it back, if we're looking to turn this into a business and not just something to make a few extra dollars every month, which if that is where you are sitting at, that is perfectly fine. But for those of you that wanna be in this for the long haul, like I have, I live and die by the, I'm not trying to gain a sale today, but a customer for life. And that is how you will get the residual income is by keeping those customers. And it all starts with um, getting them in the right product at the beginning. So hopefully you guys got some tips out of this. Again, um, I wanted to make it short and sweet. I could talk forever. I absolutely love, <laughs> love connecting with all of you guys. Um, I've met a lot of you in person. I hope to meet more of you guys. Um, how do I make them an account? Phil, okay. Um, so Sherry, I'll tell you really quick what I do that is completely different from what other people do. Um, when they fill out their job form, um, which if you don't know how to do that, that is in the um, Team Jacob training. Um, I will have all their information. Some people, and I used to do this, and I'm not going to, I mean, whatever, you know, you personally choose to do, some people will create them account without asking them. Um, I don't do that because I've had a lot of people that will come back with their email already taken and they're like, I never signed up. I never asked for an account. Um, well, some artists, when they, you know, if they would have filled out a jot form for another artist, that artist went ahead and created an account without them knowing. So I don't do that anymore. Again, I don't think it's bad or wrong or it's, you know, it's just not how I do my business. So I actually ask them. So I will say to make this convenient for you, just like this makeup is going to be, um, once we finalize your lip and cheek and your eyeshadow colors, um, I can create the account for you, fill your cart and send you the link. And most people will be like, okay. And for me, it takes me literally a matter of minutes to do that. Again, I am not, there are artists on here. <laughs> Beth, I just saw my friend Beth. Um, she's doing color matches that are at a super, super high volume. Now I'm speaking to many of us on the team that are not at, you know, getting 20 matches a day. Okay. So for people that cannot sustain that, 
I know I'm almost positive Beth creates them a link. So then she sends that, which is amazing, and then they create their own account. And sometimes I will do that too. You know, it depends. Um, but anything to make it convenient and easy for them is really, really gonna help. And put the stuff in the cart. They can delete it. Everyone knows how to delete or edit their cart. They're not gonna hit checkout without looking at that final dollar amount. We didn't, you know, make them spend $300. Um, and so hopefully that answered your question. If not, let me know. Again, um, thank you guys so much. And Rachel, thanks for bringing this all back. I really do think it just helps. And again, I referenced a training that you had five years ago. So all of this, just pick a few things and uh, run with it. So thanks guys. Have a great Monday.